Okay, today I'm going to talk about um, working with Spitfire Audio's chamber strings. And what I want to show is how to set up using uh, the UACC, or sometimes called the UAC, um, MIDI commands to change articulations. Um, I think a lot of people you're used to using key switches, and this is just for me such a better way because it sends out a MIDI message and on that MIDI channel, on the exact number, that one articulation is there and that only articulation is there. It means you can load up the entire articulation list from chamber strings and, and trigger them all from an iPad. Now on the iPad, I'm using something called a lemur, which you can see over here is the lemur editor. And uh, it's made by Line. Uh, line company here. I don't know if I have a thing for it, but um, basically I'll, I'll send some links or put some, post some links below. All right, so the first thing you want to do is open up your Spitfire Audio uh, chamber strings or any of the Spitfire Audio uh, uh, samples and uh, just quickly load up, let's say, the violins. That's fine. And what I want to do is actually no way. I'm gonna do this another way. I want to go to the extended techniques and grab the core techniques. All right, you can see this has a lot more articulations loaded. So the first thing you want to do is save a copy. So that way you can always go back if somehow you made a mistake. I have a tendency to just to use my initials. It's just easier for me that way. And then you do file and save as. Boom. All right, so now it's saved with a little SG initials after it for my name, Scott Glasgow. All right, so next what we need to do is click on this little um, wrench icon. And you're going to see how a lot of this has just changed, but this lets you kind of get under the hood. And what I like to do, um, one of the first things we need to do is tell it to, to make changes via UAC. The little lock icon here and you can see lock to you a c c now when you click on the various icons you'll see or various articulations you'll see it says uacc 1 uacc 7 uacc 10 so it's saying that it's going to change that channel when that number pops up now i like to use uh midi message cc message 9 um, I know a lot of people like to use other ones. They like to use CC32, but 9 is the number I like to use because it's the one that I've set up for my whole studio. So I click Learn. I wiggle my 9 knob, which sends that message. And boom, now we're all good to go. Um, one other thing I like to do is I like to put my vibrato on uh, CC2. That way I can move all these things around. And I've got dynamics, expression, CC all next to each other and volume uh, over here and the pan knob up there. So it, for me, it's really clean that way. All right, so now we've got this all set up. Let's start programming. Let's go over to the Lemur app. Do we need to connect it? And that's the important thing. There's a little arrow up here. It says Lemur connection. And that's to make sure that your, your iPad is connected to the network. Now I'm not gonna get into how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, just look online. But um, once you get it connected, um, you open up the lemur editor and you can do connect. And there we have it. It's now connected. Now, I happen to have quite a few different um, things loaded already. Uh, my main page has faders, which I have a fader box, so I don't use it as much, but it's there. Um, I'm using string. I've got my, my normal general strings, brass, winds. Percussion, which isn't programmed yet, Vo uh, choir, and then I've got some other things like uh, um, CSS strings, uh, Berlin Orchestra, Berlin Metropolis, uh, Orchestra Tools Metropolis, that is, and I've got the Spitfire Chamber strings already programmed, but we're going to start from scratch so I can give you a, a kind of an idea of how that works. All right, well, the first thing you're going to want to do is you'll see up here in the right corner, you've got library and palette. On, on palette, I, I like to create containers. That way, everything I know I'm working with is contained. You don't have to, but I like to do that. And then I just quickly kind of make it nice and big and fit. 
Okay, so nothing too exciting there. Just a, just a box that shows where my stuff is going to go. Then the second thing you need to create is a button. Um, you really need to know, it needs to have a button. So it needs to know what you're trying to tell it to do. Now with the button, um, I like to color most of my things. Um, you can color it any way you want, but I like to color mine pretty much all um, kind of a turquoise green color with a, when I hit it, I want to have a different color. So basically what I'm setting is the, the color of the button is going to be here. And then when I press it on, it's going to turn pink or at least some sort of bright color. All right, so now we have a button. And if we push that button, it should light up. Well, it's not doing that. Oh, uh, sorry, you have to hit uh, Command E, I think it is. Um, or maybe it's just E. No, I can't remember what number it is. What it is. Um, yeah, there we go. It's Shift E, and that puts it in performance mode. But on my iPad, I can hit it and see it moving around. All right, so we've got a little fancy little button here. What are we telling it to do? Because, you know, there's nothing that's going to change uh, the UACC unless you program it. So there are options up here. Um, you can send note messages on off. You can set all kinds of things. I'm going to use a controller change, which is the same, so it's set as default. My controller number is going to be 9, because if you recall, I set my MIDI channel to number 9. All right, so 9 and 9. Now. What I need to know is what is the UACC for this first longs? And it's CC1. Alrighty. So, leave the scale at zero. Change this to number one. And then change this part over here to plus. And that basically says message sent when value increases. Now, if you leave this as any, it won't work. If you change it to any of the other ones, it still won't work. Because what it's doing is sending the message that the scale is going to go up. And as we have a patch on, let's say, 111 or something, it needs to go from 0 to 111 and stop. And that's what the plus does. Um, the only other one that works is this one right here, which is the message sent when value goes from 0 to positive. Um, I don't know. I, I've just got used to using the 0 or plus sign, so that's kind of what I'm doing now. All right, so MIDI target, um, I use one. Uh, I think it's just what I've got used to using over the years. Um, you know, you might use something a little different, but I use MIDI channel one. So if you look here, we've got parent, none, X, fine, target, MIDI one, controller change, controller number, we've got the scale and what to, and we've got the plus sign. So that's what it looks like in the end. But let's go back. All right, so we've got our fancy little button here. Um, I usually like to make my buttons pretty large, actually. Ideally, I want it to be big and huge like this if I can. So, um, but I know that the UACC needs a lot of space. So I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna go with this size. And so here you can see your X, Y, and sizes. We're gonna go with 200 and 75, 200 oh, width and 75 height. Okay, and sorry, I've got so many pages here. I'm just trying to show you what how I set this up. Okay, 275, so 200 width, 75, and we want to give it a name. Um, let's call it just longs. Now, if you leave this style on section empty, when you hit the key, it will go black. So basically, it's telling you when you hit the key, what do you want to see? And that's what I want to see. So now when I hit the key, it does that. Now, the behavior is acting a little strange right now. I want to find out what's going on. The behavior should be not a switch. Ah. In the objects, there's properties and behavior. Click on pad. You don't want it to switch, you just want it to go select it. Yes. And there we have it. That's how you do that. Now, let's just see if this works. Let's go to another one, make a second one. Put it right next to it. 
I'm going to call this one Long's Consort. Remember, copy it to the style on. So now we have to figure out what number that it goes to. It goes to seven, which you can see right here. See, it's a CC7. Let's go back to here. Change the scale to seven. And you should be able to go from here, longs. Uh, well, let's see. If I hit longs, then longs consort. Okay, something's not working. Let's see, what did we not do right? Let's make sure this is sending the right message. It's on nine. That's going good. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, UACC. What did I do wrong? And that's the, the, the problem with all this stuff is, what do you do wrong? Maybe channel one. Controller nine. Controller nine. Scale seven. Scale one. Ah, look at that channel. Boom. Yeah, make sure you get that set right. Channel three is not going to work. It's always fun, isn't this, programming? Okay, so if we hit... There it is. You can see the longs are now playing. Then when I hit the longs con sword, boom, it switches. And you can set up the whole damn thing. Um, what I have a tendency to do is I will load up everything. If you can want to check this out, this is really cool. Don't save. We are going out here to the my special folder. Whoop. Okay. Advanced. Extended. Okay, I loaded the main ones. I load up the decorative. I load up the legato decorative. And this brand new, very awesome performance legato that just came out. All right, so what do we have here? We have four patches loaded for all the violin ones. You see that? All right, now watch this. As I'm playing, and I'll just select the first one, what we're gonna see here is it should be playing a legato. And it's not. Well, there you go. Much more. Oh, once again. So once you've loaded all four, you put them on the same MIDI channel. And the cool thing about this is that once you've got them on the same MIDI channel, you have in your sequencer only one track for violin one. Well, I actually do two because I like to have DVC at times. So two tracks for violin one. All articulations, even the weird ones like uh, Salpont Mute and stuff you'll probably never use. But if we go back and I play, we now have the figure Legato's playing. And that's it. So as you change to the different patches that are all programmed by these numbers, you'll get the changes happening. See how it just switched to Consort? So that's how it works. And pretty much every single articulation is set to its own number. There's no way to have them play at the same time. So you can see I'm playing with the Legato Sol G as 37, Legato, Legato Tremolo is 30, Legato Sol, Long Sol Pont is 19, uh, Long's 1. So if we go back and do that again, we have just Long's playing when I play. And I can switch to Sol Pont, Sol Pont Mute. I can switch to Trills Minor. I can switch to Tremolo. I can do any number of things, and all of it uh, switches. So, sorry I didn't have volume on the, uh, the music itself, but you can see what I'm talking about. Everything is doing as it should be doing. 
And that's it. That's how you do it. That's how you program it. Just remember, remember, remember that when you are selecting these, or when you're creating these buttons in Lemur, to make sure, without a doubt, that you've got the scale set to what you need to, which is a number from Spitfire's chamber strings or any of Spitfire's things that are using the UAC. And just make sure that number goes right here. And then make sure that you've got this selected to plus. Those are your two main things. As long as you've got your controller numbers, your MIDI messages, your MIDI channels set, it should work perfectly. Do that times however many you need. Um, I still haven't done my winds or brass, but winds also has things. And in fact, here we go. This is the UACC list. So you can see flutter overbloom is on number 14. Now, because I'm dealing with strings, I'm not dealing with that. But as soon as I'm ready, I can just pick one of these empty ones and start adding these other flutter tongues or other things that might be there. Um, on part two, page two, I should say, you've got bells up, as in for French horns, obviously. Um, yeah, so it's got everything. It's got everything you need, and, and that number is the only number that will ever be used by that, uh, that articulation. Harmonics will always be UACC10, and it never changes. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.